Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are in Olympiad workout series and have brought forward to you a question wherein we'll be taking up an ideal gas but with a hypothetical distribution of a Gaussian distribution. Okay, so I've already shared the title of this particular video in the community post and requested students to make a wild guess on what the problem situation could be. And I must say, I'm very impressed with some of those uh, uh, imaginative and creative uh, physical situations that you have provided with. And even though those things are not being taken up in this particular video, I would uh, uh, definitely take up those things because I've got great ideas ideas from you uh, for the future videos. Okay, so thanks for all the response. And let's try to see what happens if I ideal gas situation has a hypothetical probability distribution for its velocities as a Gaussian distribution. It involves a famous integration trick and area under the Gaussian curve, there are many ways of solving, but I would like to introduce you people to a a school level trick that will be uh, essential for your Olympiad preparations. Also, we'll top it off with six practice problems for some of which would be candidates for your JE advanced examinations, okay? So let's try to see uh, the problem statement first. Ideal gas with a Gaussian distribution of speeds, okay, for its molecules. A hypothetical case of an ideal gas system following a Gaussian probability distribution for its molecular speeds is as shown. P of V dV represents the fraction of molecules having speeds between V and V plus dV. Find the values uh, in terms of C for these two quantities. The value of K in this expression, how much it should be in terms of this constant C inside the function. Also the average speed of this uh, ideal gas system molecules if they were to follow this distribution. Both these values are requested to be found in terms of the constant C. Okay, so I hope you have given it an F try. So in case you haven't, just pause the video, give it a try and come back for the concept application and also the six practice problems that I promised at the end of the video, okay? So let's start off with the basic understanding of the probability distribution curve. So in case you want to have an elaborate understanding, you can go for an old video on KTG that I have produced long time back. That was JE Main's uh, revision series that was, uh, uh, done somewhere in January and February. And you can directly go to the 26th minute of that video, understand the probability distribution curve that I have explained there. Also, there were some nice practice problems followed by that explanation at that point. Okay, so link of this video is in the description below or on the I button above. In case you are new, please do check it out. Okay, so for those who couldn't check it out, I'm giving you the gist of that concept. Whenever you are given an N of V graph, right? There is a difference between N of V and P of V. So let me explain. Whenever you are given N of V versus V graph, here I have taken a standard Maxwellian or Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. Okay, so when someone talks about a small area N of V dV, as you could see here, this indicates the number of molecules which have the speeds between V and V plus dV. Okay, since this some of these areas would definitely total up to the number of molecules, you can divide this and define a new function called fraction of molecules which are having the speeds between V and V plus dV. That fractional thing is going to be related to the probability distribution. So if N of V curve is given, then the area under that should be N. But if you convert it into the probability distribution curve by bringing n down, then it's obvious that the sum of all probabilities should be equal to one, the summation being an integration here. So we define the P of V function as one by total number of molecules into dn function by dV. Okay, so this is the idea that was already covered. And if you take it forward, the total area under the P of V graph, right, when you convert this N of V graph for, uh, to the P of V at any temperature, the distribution can change, but the area under that will always be equal to one. Here, the area will be always equal to number of molecules. And here, individually at T1 temperature or at T2 temperature, the area under each of these graphs will always be equal to one. That is the concept that we are going to use. But the problem here is to be able to uh, uh, calculate the area under that distribution curve that was given in the question. Okay, so the question had this Gaussian distribution. So we need to be able to sort out the area under this graph. So for that, we have a mathematical trick that date back to Poisson's time. So there are many ways I'll try to take up the polar system 
conversion where uh, we'll use the poisson trick to calculate the f of x equal to e power minus x squares area first some of the mathematical en enthusiasts who are watching this channel right now would be knowing this particular trick okay so if i try to evaluate the integration of this from minus infinity to plus infinity right let's do the mathematics first call it as integration i then i square can be written in this format okay then you can introduce a new variable called y and write these two integrals separately right so as long as you take them from minus infinity to plus infinity it should be the same integral and then you can combine these two independent variables into this double integration right and x square plus y square you can argue is a sort of a xy coordinate uh, cartesian coordinate system plane okay you can convert this cartesian coordinate system plane into a polar system and solve the integration easily so we'll borrow this i square integration into the next page in this manner okay so we are looking at this i square value which can be converted into x square plus y square in polar system would be r square and dx into dy is integration over any uh, uh, particular area under a graph a two dimensional graph can be written as r dr into d theta so what essentially we are doing is from the cartesian system small rectangular areas when summed up over the entire area can be replaced with another type of small rectangles right which are dr into r d theta so that's what we have written makes this a easily doable integration you could see that r into e power minus r square is an integrable form much easier compared to this function okay so that's what it is only difference is that minus infinity to plus infinity in cartesian system now changes to r being changed from 0 to infinity and theta being changed from 0 to 2 pi okay so first we'll perform the inside integral of r and you'll end up getting this uh, sorry first we'll do the theta one and you'll get the 2 pi out and then you can perform this one by simple substitution of r square equal to s okay so you end up getting pi as the answer once you are done that means i square is pi therefore the area under the gaussian distribution curve is a root pi if you are taking the integration from minus infinity to plus infinity this gaussian distribution curve has many practical applications also known as normal distribution curve or a bell curve i would urge you to search through the internet for other practical applications some of which would be physics applications especially the statistical thermodynamics okay so let's move on from here once this root pi is done we need only half that area right because in our gaseous distribution we had only from 0 to infinity so keeping that in mind this integration okay so integration of pv dv i'll put this k inside so k comes out and also this v by c factor is there that spits out a c also okay so the kc extra and since this entire integration was root pi half of that area which is on the first quadrant would be root pi by 2 but all of this by concept should be equal to 1 is what we already seen so the value of k that he requested comes out to be 2 divided by c root pi so this is your first question's answer c divided by 2 uh, divided by c root pi is the answer for the k value okay right so using that let's try to simply estimate the value of average speed average speed is therefore defined by integration of v into the fraction of molecules having that v divided by sum of all molecules probability okay so this is a simple one you can also write this as n and n by multiplying it with n on both sides it depends on which distribution curve was given to you when you are evaluating rms square or the average of v square right you can just replace v with v square you will get the mean square speed and then you can take a square root for the rms so that's the idea that will be one of our practice problems okay so just substitute the function that you got bring the k out and you can see that v into e power minus v square by c square is an easily integrable function by writing this vdv as d of v by c whole square the correction factor c square here this would be a simple e power minus x dx integration from 0 to infinity you'll end up getting 1 so this would be simply kc square by 2 you already have the k in the previous page substitute that value that kc by 2 is 1 by root pi and then you end up getting the average speed to be c divided by root pi so this is the answer for the second question i hope you are ready for the practice problems now there will be very very interesting six of them okay so 
before we move on is one small request okay so it's 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 small for you but it will be huge for me if you can keep liking my videos so that the reach is better and gives me more motivation so it's a simple uh, target if you reach 500 i'll immediately upload the next video which is going to be important for your je advanced preparation okay so thanks all for the support that you have been showing right please just keep liking the videos okay right once that is out of our way, let's start with the practice problem one. I've just borrowed forward the same problem statement. Only thing is you are supposed to now calculate VRMS in terms of C. Okay. So just try to comment your answer along with the timestamp. There are maybe multiple ways of solving. Also try to let me know what method you have used to integrate that. Okay. So it's a pretty straightforward one. Also another important integration actually when you do V square into this particular function. Okay, right. So this is a straightforward one, a continuation of the given problem. Let's go to the practice problem two. I picked from Irado Select Solutions. One of the students actually pointed out that I'm going to take this problem. Okay, so he was very close to the guess. Okay, so this is a very interesting question where the potential energy of gas molecules in a system varies as a radial distance. Okay, and based on that, you're supposed to associate the concentration of the molecules. In ideal gas, we take the usual concentration to be uniform, right? In here, it is not so okay so this is a very interesting problem always try to go through all these four options very uh, four parts of the problem very carefully and please try to associate this is at a je advanced level for sure where this function is given okay right so let's move on to the practice problem three this is slightly tougher okay so we could say at the border of je advanced and definitely a candidate for your olympiads at the first level okay so this is the maxwell's distribution function that you are talking about and number of molecules reaching unit area of a wall at angles of theta and theta plus d theta we usually talk about normal uh, uh, molecular speeds reaching the wall but we are talking about at an angle and how much how many molecules are reaching in between a small variation of theta and theta plus d theta this can be JE advanced question, but if JE advanced want to ask this question, they have to give you the distribution, Maxwell distribution equations. There is no way students can remember these equations into the exam. So it could be a passage which JE is very famous uh, about, right? So they have asked Coriolis force, there are they have asked Lawson's criteria in nuclear physics. There are many situations where they gave information like this and asked a question. So it's not just about remembering this formula, it's never about that. It's about the problem application you should understand what this uh, distribution means and you should be able to apply this okay so comment your answer along with the timestamp below i'll try to respond okay or i will take it up in the erodo select solution series okay so in case you want some help in this problem three before i take up the video you can check out this old video on one dimensional maxwell distribution this this one dimensional maxwell distribution i've already solved a question from ncrt exemplar problems you may not believe it, NCRT exemplar has a question which is associated with this one dimensional Maxwell distribution and they have given the solution wrong and I've corrected it. This was a very old video, one of my first few videos on this channel and uh, maybe only video in which the thumbnail has a dark background. So that's how I remember this. Okay, so uh, the play also the playlist of KTG have some must see videos. I've produced 13 to 15 videos by now on KTG, each one has its unique flavor. So please make sure you also visit the playlist. Playlist and this video are in the description below. Just try to check it out if you are new. Okay, so we are done with practice problem three. I've also given the reference. This is the practice problem four. I have put it at JE mains level so that people watching this video get everything they need for each of their standards. Okay, so even though it's JE mains, it's a tricky question. Read the question very carefully. This is uh, based on the normal ideal gas or a KTG theory, no hypothetical situation is just asking which of these speeds corresponds to the statement in the question, how well you understand the Maxwellian distribution, how well you understand the definitions of these three, how are they associated with the energy is what this question is all about. Comment your answer along with the timestamp with the option. Okay, right. Let's move on to the practice problem five. This is this is very decent. Okay, so how well you can read the hypothetical distribution that is given to you and five options are given. So which of these best represents the correct ordering of the speeds? Okay, try this one out. A lot of students get this wrong. So I'm waiting for your answer along with the timestamp below so that I can respond. Last one. Okay, again, we go back to a standard book called Resnick Halliday in which um, 
we talk about uh, the root two v factor in your mean free path calculations. Okay, so this is this is the text. Okay, imagine someone has given you this text in the exam and then asking you this problem. So this is the passage and this is the problem associated with it. Okay, so in mean free path calculation, we use Maxwell's distributions and talk about the factor of root two v in the bottom of the mean free path. Now he's changing the idea of the question. He says, for a gas in which all molecules travel with same speed of V average, not the distribution is changing, all the molecules to be moving at same speed, right? Then you have to show that V relative to is not root to V, but four by three of V average. Can you do that, right? So just try to write the procedure of how you apply uh, the distribution understanding and give me the uh, solution at the bottom of the comment section with the timestamp of this problem. I'll respond, okay? This is a very interesting problem. I'll take it up in the Olympiad workout series in case you struggle, okay? So let's move on. Uh, there are some nice discussions going on in the Discord server in a KTG and thermodynamics channel. Some of the questions of this channel itself are being discussed there. Some students come up with new questions from their own exam papers. All those things are being discussed and it's a strong community of serious students. I already crossed 1,500 uh, people there. So you don't want to miss out on uh, studying along with them. Okay, so uh, also uh, some QOTDs are running questions of the day. I'm posting some of them on the community tab, right? Once I'm busy, I may not keep a track of them. So uh, you can keep a check on this uh, community tab by pressing the notification bell icon of the channel, right? You keep getting the updates, okay? So link of the video about the Discord and its users have already been made as a tutorial. You can check out that video in case you are new, you don't understand what is Discord. So you might be impressed upon to join there, okay? so. That's it. And uh, along with workout series, you have other series that you can see on the screen. There are many more series also, links of which are in description below. All of them will aid you in your preparations of respective JE and Olympiad examinations. Okay, so 200, 220 plus videos. I would urge you to watch four or five videos per day, maybe at a faster speed, 1.25x, so that you can uh, finish off your preparation and have an edge over others. Okay, so. Please don't forget to like. That's something that I would uh, uh, impress upon you. That's a lot of, uh, um, you could say, payback that you can give me for the effort that I am putting. Okay, so in case you have not yet subscribed, watch four or five videos, and then you will only be able to decide whether to do it or not. Thanks for staying this long and see you in the next video. I hope we reach the like target very quickly. I'm coming up with the next awesome video as soon as possible, right? See you then.